Good morning, I'm Rian Taus, a past chair of the Council on Hypertension, and I'm delighted to be chatting with Jeff Garvin today, who's the 2016 awardee of the Selden Award of the Kidney Council. So Jeff, on behalf of all of us in both the Hypertension and the Kidney Council, we are so delighted to know that you are the recipient of this very prestigious award in 2016. Thanks, Rihanna. It's a, it's a great honor and a privilege to be uh, given this award and receive this recognition from one's peers. Jeff, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about your research, how you got into it, and how over the years it's progressed to what you're going to be sharing with us in your award lecture tomorrow. So we were initially, our research was dealing with salt-sensitive hypertension and we got into that research because of this seminal work done by Lewis Dahl in the development of the Dahl salt-sensitive rat. We were one of the first laboratories to show that nitric oxide inhibited sodium reabsorption along the nephron and that that was defective in the model of the Dahl rat causing salt-sensitive hypertension. Since then, over the years, we've progressed and studied a number of factors that cause salt-sensitive hypertension including angiotensin, reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide, of course. And more recently, because of this, we've moved into diet-induced salt-sensitive hypertension. My lecture tomorrow is going to be about fructose-induced salt-sensitive hypertension because, as you know, over the past 40 years or so, the consumption of salt has gone up dramatically mm -hmm. in the U.S. diet, as has the consumption of fructose. This correlates remarkably well with the increase in hypertension overall, which has gone from about 18% in the early 70s to nearly 30% now. And about half of that increase in hypertension is salt-sensitive hypertension. So Jeff, this is really complicating the whole system much more than what it was just a few years ago when we believed that it was just the salt-sensitive component that was contributing to this hypertension and now adding to this the um, aspects of fructose or sugars, this really becomes quite a complicated paradigm in terms of teasing out the mechanisms. And I guess at the um, human population level, I guess it reflects really what we're eating ultimately in terms of our salt. Well, absolutely, Rianne. But as you know, hypertension is a very complicated disease and there's many factors, as I will discuss tomorrow, Things that inf uh, affect your blood pressure include genetics and epigenetics, the environment, any sort of pathology such as renal artery stenosis, how much you exercise or whether you're a couch potato, and of course your diet. And many studies have now correlated increases in blood pressure and renal injury with increases in fructose in the diet. There are some studies that show a, or don't show that correlation and we think that that's due to the variable of salt. And our research, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow, clearly shows that when you add the two together, they're very detrimental in terms of blood pressure. So Jeff, perhaps you could tell us in terms of what we consume, what are the foods that actually contain fructose? Well, the biggest increase in fructose in our diets is caused by the consumption of soft drinks. Yes. So about 40% of fructose intake comes from sugar-sweetened beverages. I hate to age myself, but in the early 70s, when I was a kid, you could get a soft drink for a dime, and it was either a six-ounce version or a 10-ounce version. And now you can go into a convenience store and get a drink that cost approximately the same amount of money, and it could be 64 ounces. So there's been an order of magnitude increase in the volume, and with that volume comes an order of magnitude increase in fructose consumption, because the beverages now are sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, which is 42% fructose. So Jeff, um, as we can all see in our um, populations at large, there's more and more consumption of both peanuts, uh, salted snacks, and of course with that goes the desire to drink more, and of course one would associate drinking more sodas as we eat more salty um, foods. And certainly in the Western world, and probably in the developing world as well, this increased consumption of salty and sugary uh, foods is increasing and most likely contributes to the increasing prevalence in hypertension 
probably at a global level. You're absolutely correct, Rianne. Uh, hypertension is now the leading cause of, quote, loss of health worldwide. And this is due to the fact that there's increased salt consumption around the world. And in developing countries, they look to the West and, and want to mimic many things that we do. Unfortunately, they want to mimic our diets as well. And so with the increase in salt consumption, they also have increased consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. Most of those beverages are sweetened with high fructose corn syrup because it's relatively inexpensive and you perceive it as being sweeter than actual table sugar. And so that combination of increasing salt in your diet and increasing fructose in your diet through primarily sugar-sweetened beverages causes the problem of elevated blood pressure. So Jeff, if you want to give us one message in terms of population health, I guess I could imagine what it will be, but perhaps you could just reiterate what it is we should be doing to have a healthy lifestyle in terms of fructose and salt intake. So unfortunately, too many Americans are looking for the magic bullet, and there really is no magic bullet. It, of course, is eat a well-balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables, try to limit your salt intake, get plenty of exercise, and also I would say there's new studies now looking at sleep as a cause of hypertension, and I would say get your eight hours also. So I guess perhaps our mothers and our grandmothers were correct after all. A healthy lifestyle will certainly create a healthy population. Absolutely. So Jeff, once again on behalf of our council and the Kidney Council, uh, congratulations and we certainly look forward to learning much more tomorrow in your award presentation. Well thank you very much Rianne and as I said this is a great honor. Dr. Selden was a huge factor in the development of our understanding of the role in both renal disease and in hypertension and has made many seminal contributions.